Oh, we you helping? Hello, Internet. Me and Ika the dog here, uh, swinging things in the yard, because that's what you do. Um, okay, so <clears throat> you may know this from other feature films by Dr. Kwan, the uh, presumably foremost golf swing, ball golf swing expert. Um, he's all over YouTube. I will put links to his two, <clears throat> his two first videos about his rope stuff. Um, this is all completely his work, not mine at all, but it's very groovy, so I want him to share it with y'all. Um, but first, simpler, bigger, dumb, brutish things. Um, go to your local thrift shop, buy a golf club, this one costs $4, go to your field and throw it carefully. It's a lot heavier than a disc, be careful. Uh, make sure there's absolutely no one around you because you're gonna have no control <laughs> over it at first. Um, so what, what I learned from this, and I haven't spent enough time throwing hammers yet, um, but I will do that also. I suspect it's pretty much the same as this, but what's really cool about a golf club is find, find a standstill, backswing, and then try to throw it just like you would a disc. Um, what will happen is if I'm trying to throw at the camera, it's a bad idea, I will release this thing that way, like 45 degrees off angle. Um, if you're anything like me, that's what will happen. And what that's teaching you is that you have in your head too much of the idea that, that your release, your snap, happens towards the target. That is not accurate, right? It happens, everyone says it happens at 10 o'clock. That doesn't feel like 10 o'clock to me. It feels like 10.30, but, you know, whatever. Um, but I, I knew that. I knew that academically. I was like, hit at 10. Hit has to happen at 10. That's not useful. If my body doesn't know how to do it, it's not going to happen, right? So this will help teach your body how to do it. <clears throat> because what it does is it slows down the timing a lot. The rope slows down the timing a lot too. Uh, rope gives you better feel, but there's something, something about the golf club. So what does it mean for my hit to happen at 10? It means the thing is going to release from my hand at 10 or 10.30 as the case may be. Um, so what does that mean, right? How do we actually get there? This being so long and so heavy, <laughs> the dog is distracted by something. Hey, Inca, come here. One minute. Hey. You. She was trying to eat slugs. Not okay. Uh, so where were we? This. Um, so as I have mentioned in, in previous videos, if you're up to date on everything on the channel, um, this teaches you the hit at 1030 really well. Um, it is contrary to getting to a deep pocket. This is not a good tool for practicing getting to a deep pocket because it doesn't make sense. If I get here, nothing, nothing is going to happen, right? In order for this to make sense, my throw has to be out here. So there's some hinge happening at my wrist and a lot of, a lot of my throw is being projected from my shoulder because this is bigger, heavier, and longer, right? With a disc, I can get to a deep pocket and still have this projection make sense. Um, this just slows it down too much to where it, it makes it harder to feel a deep pocket but I still feel like there's really something of value there in getting the hit to happen at 10. So what does it mean when the hit happens at 10? It means that there is this lag that happens, or some bend here and some bend here, and where that all snaps tight and is relatively straight, your elbow isn't actually going to straighten all the way, it's gonna stay five or 10 degrees bent. This is natural, this is correct. It keeps your elbow from hyperextending. That's another thing you'll find here is that if you keep the elbow on the plane the whole time, it's easy for it to kind of tweak your arm backwards. So you do want this supination here, right? That's in every other sport. Baseball, they roll over, I would presume after they're hit, ideally. I don't know baseball stuff. Um, they roll over, golf rolls over, baseball rolls over. So if baseball rolls over, our backhand should roll over, right? Humans aren't robots. We don't go like this. 
we roll a little bit. That's part of what gets you to nose down. Separate video. So that's, that's what this will help teach you is that the timing for everything to line up and be straight-ish at release, right? So the slack, the lag in the system is gonna be out by the time you're at 10 o'clock. So what has to change for that is your pull is gonna feel more like an arc out here and less like a you're trying to go towards the target and not at all like you're trying to go towards 10 even. Like, so I would cue people, you know, don't flick water off your hands towards the target, flick water off your hands towards 10, but that's not even right. You're just, you're just setting up the impulse so that it happens to straighten at 10. So you change your timing to change the effect. You're not doing anything at 10 o'clock, right? You're just changing the input timing so that it happens right there. I don't want to throw this because I will throw it through the window. So that's that part. And then this part, I am not good at this yet, but even just messing around with it for a couple of days, there's really something of value there. So, so what Dr. Kwan has you do is you get a, um, he doesn't tell you how long it should be, but he holds it in his hand and about a foot of it is on the ground. So for me, that works out too. It comes from my shoulder to my hand and obviously you double it, cut your rope off and you're good to go. So take a, a golf grip, right? Dominant hand lower. And then he says to start swinging forward. So swing forward and then back. And you're trying to get this little nunchuck wrap right under your armpit. Uh, do be careful. It kind of zaps your funny bone like almost every time if you're doing it what I assume to be correct. So you want it to wrap here and then wrap there. And what you're doing, so this is bad, right? It's gonna be bad before I get warmed up. See how much the end of the rope is jiggling around and my plane is not defined. So what this is doing is it's recalibrating your swing plane to where it's reasonably straight, right? So I'll stop talking and see if I can get it good. So that's better. I'll see if I can advanced mode, switch angles. So now the rope is staying way straighter the whole time, whereas before it was bobbling around a lot. So the difference is everything's coordinated and moving together, right? So when, when Dr. Kwan explains this, he says, you, you don't want to do very much with your hands. You don't want to do very much with your arms. You want to kind of keep this structure here in my shoulders and my arms and move everything from center. So when we do things wrong in our throw, we like have a two active back side or two active front side and, and rotation happens somewhere other than around the center, right? So it's kind of the same in ball golf that they'll shift forward too far and then you end up chopping down with your hands, right? So we can do similar things like this in our throw. Like, yes, there's differences, obviously, but the core of the mechanic in play here is rotate around your center and time your weight shift with your rotation in a way that doesn't screw up the rope, right? Look out, hon. So when you get it right, you're not doing a whole lot with your hands. There is a little bit of give here to make the thing wrap right, but there's an acceleration and a deceleration. So accelerating on the down and decelerating on the up in a way that keeps the rope straight. So it's always kind of hitting me center chest in the sternum if it's not throwing my microphones all over the place. <laughs> Don't need that one. <clears throat> so what's like what's the big thing here the big thing is when you get it right which i can't really do while i'm talking so i'll try to you can add speed without anything feeling disjointed or like it's not a part of the whole right so more of my power comes from i shift my weight 
I swing and then I press that uh, Dr. Kwan has a video on this too, the kickstand move. That's golf's version of an active brace. I'm pressing here to make the acceleration happen. So if I try to make the rope go faster, right? So if I get into a flow and then I make my arms go faster, that one kind of worked. <laughs> but my arms get ahead of the rope and then continuity is broken and the rope is behind and it's, I don't feel the power anymore because the weight of the rope is back here and I'm trying to have the throw be up here and it doesn't work. When you get everything to come through together with like just a tiny bit of lag, then it feels good. Everything stays connected and your weight shift makes sense. And again, you're not doing a whole lot with your arms because that makes the rope hit you in the face, for one, and you lose the continuity, right? So back to, to this angle. And the other thing that's great about it is that I've done, you know, how many hundred weight shifts in, you know, a couple minutes. You can't do that actually throwing. So you can really get a feel for this front hip loading and then unloading. And you can try one hand too. <laughs> like um, Kwan also has one of the videos, one of the first two ones. Uh, you're not limited to doing this in ball golf mode. You can bring it up here and it still works. Yes, it's different because this is bilateral and our throw is unilateral. Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> this uses both hands and our throw really only uses one. So you can, you can kind of use this as an intermediary between the timing of the rope and the timing of a, a golf club throw. But you can kind of get into this weird gray area where like here, this is not an accurate simulation of a golf throw for disc golf because my hand is rolling over more and it, I have this weird carryover from stick fighting that I bring this hand up to guard anytime my stick is over here, right? That's what that's about. Muscle memory, it's real. But th this, hopefully you can see here that there's no power pocket here, right? My arm is super far out here because this, my wrist and my connection point with the rope is acting as my elbow, right? And because the length of the lever is longer, my pocket isn't as deep, right? So I would want this, but if I do that, the disc flicks out in the front, which we don't want. So this helps with timing and it helps with body coordination and connectivity, um, but it's not gonna help with your final power pocket position. So be aware of that. This is not the end all be all of drills. But I do think there's really something useful there. So go to the hardware store, pick up whatever, six, seven feet of rope, and try it out. And let me know what you think. All right, Internet, thanks for watching.